Horizon, an American saga, chapter one is out in theaters. New Western directed by and starring Kevin Costner. Uh, it's apparently his huge passion project for which he left Yellowstone and in which he invested millions of dollars of his own money after being unable to secure outside funding. Uh, some sources say around $35 million. Costner himself has apparently said it's closer to $70 million. Anyway, it's pretty wild, um, but gotta respect the confidence and I'll certainly always check at least, um, at least check out you know these passion projects uh, like these, like like this one, like Megalopolis coming up from Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, Horizon is long, uh, three hours, one minute long, and like the title suggests, it's the first part of what is supposed to be a four movie series. The second one is supposed to come out in just a couple of weeks uh, already. The film, aside from Costner, also stars Sienna Miller, Sam Worthington, Jenna Malone, um, Abby Lee, Luke Wilson, and Michael Rooker. And here's the thing, it's barely even a film. It feels like a collection of vignettes, of random scenes from several different plot lines involving different characters that in most cases never actually interject or even impact one another. Um, and those scenes, those, those plot lines are meant to serve as an introduction to the world and to these people stretched into three hours of runtime, but not actually telling any story at all, if you think about it. So we have Kevin Costner being the strong silent type who we never learn what his motivations are, what he intends to do, how he earns his living, how he is as a person. He just sort of gets together with Abby Lee and shoots a guy. Um, that's his role in the film, essentially. There's Jenna Malone shooting her lover, who's also a gangster. Um, why she's shooting him, we never learn. And running off with his kid and, and being tracked by the other gang members. There's a group of settlers attacked by the Apache. Some of them go off for revenge. Others are rescued and taken in by the US Army. There's the Apache themselves, who split off into different groups uh, because of a disagreement. One wants to fight the settlers and drive them off. The other group is, I think, peaceful, but they also go off somewhere. It's kind of difficult to follow. And finally, we have Luke Wilson leading another group of settlers, completely unrelated to the previous one, through the plains and the deserts and sort of solving their internal problems. And by the end of the film, they never actually get anywhere. We cut between each of these groups, sometimes not seeing one for an hour at a time. Uh, we're following these very, very loose plot lines because, again, I don't feel comfortable saying that there actually really is a story here. Uh, some, some of the scenes are pretty good. Uh, the Apache ambush, the caravan infighting. Others are just absolutely bizarre. Um, mainly all the scenes between Costner and Abby Lee and most specifically their sex scene. Uh, I mean, you have to see it, but Costner is just lying there disinterested, <laughs> trying to fall asleep and the most beautiful woman in the entire film, who is also half his age, insists on fucking him uh, anyway. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's bonkers. It's ridiculous when you consider he's the director of the film. Uh, yeah, I mean, so is the entire relationship between these two characters. It just doesn't make any sense. Also, there are just plainly badly written scenes, uh, such as Costner walking from town to the cabin, talking to one of the gangster guys. None of it feels like a real conversation between two human beings. It's terribly artificial. Um, if I were to say what were my biggest problems with the film, I'd say two things. One, not only does the film not have a complete arc on its own and is very definitively part of a larger whole that is yet to come, but at the end of the three hours I still feel like the plot has not only not gotten anywhere and not only not progressed, but not even started yet. Uh, I'll give you an example. Kill Bill is a movie split into two volumes, okay? But the first one feels like a mostly completely, mostly complete film on its own. Uh, at the end, you feel like a chapter was opened and the chapter was closed. And at the same time, you also have a good idea of where we're going with this next. There's a logical next step. Same thing about Dune, most recently, also split in two halves. Same thing about Lord of the Rings, the whole trilogy which was shot back to back. With Horizon, when it ends, I have no idea what the next movies are supposed to be about. Um, I suspect the storylines will interject at some point, but for now, there isn't even 
a setup done for that. There, there isn't even real, real hint that they will. Uh, the movie doesn't end with the characters all heading in the same direction or having the same or conflicting goals. They just each sort of continue on their own individual journeys, which do not connect with one another. Um, and secondly, the second problem is I could be fine with this. Um, I could be fine with this film being an extended prologue if I felt like I got to spend a lot of time with the characters and have a good sense of who each of them is, what their motivations and goals are, what they want to do and, and what not want to do, and really just who they are. And I do not have that sense from Horizon. Uh, the characters are flat and surface level and honestly rather forgettable. There is essentially no depth and no development. Nobody changes in a significant way over the course of the first film. Um, nobody evolves. It honestly, it drives me up the fucking wall uh, the more I think about this film. It, it's not a film. Horizon is not a film. Uh, it's the first 20 minutes of a film stretch into three hours of runtime. That's what I insist upon. Uh, and those three hours end with a sudden dynamic montage that comes out of absolutely nowhere. I was going, whoa, hold on a second. Is the film showing me all of these things in two minutes, um, all of these things which are more in two minutes than the preceding three hours? Why are we watching this? Is this a time skip? What, what is this? Turns out actually it's essentially a trailer for the second part tacked onto the end of this film. Now. This is the strangest thing. Uh, despite all of this, I cannot honestly say I was bored. Uh, quite the contrary. At one point, I looked out of, uh, like I looked at my watch uh, out of curiosity and found that it's already been two hours, and I felt the movie just begun. I was somewhat entertained by the by the scenes shown to me. Uh, I liked the ones which were genuinely good, and I was still fairly amused in an ironic way by the ones I thought were bad. But I was never bored, specifically. Uh, my brain is telling me I sh should have been at some point, but I wasn't. So it's really, really weird that way. Um, quick point, quick word on the technical uh, aspects of the film. The locations, costumes, sets, makeup, all wonderful. Love the production design and the fact that it feels like it takes place in a real lived-in world and not on a soundstage. So at least on this level, it's, it's okay. Nothing to really complain about. So... How to sum this up? Is it a bad movie? I don't think so. Is it a good movie? Certainly not. I would argue, once again, it is not a movie. Uh, and if the next chapters are this long and this unfocused, perhaps this could have just been a television show or or an anthology series where we focus on each of these storylines at once instead of a series of films that pretend to be sort of telling a coherent narrative. Because the narrative structure certainly does not make any sense whatsoever for now. I will probably check out the second chapter when it comes out anyway, uh, just to see if it's going anywhere and if things <laughs> start happening eventually. But I'm definitely way less excited about the whole prospect after surviving chapter one.